السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفى وبعد As usual we begin by praising the Almighty Allah and we send the best peace and blessings upon his most beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, Brothers and sisters uh, I'm honored to have with me Sheikh Saeed Raja Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh From Canada And you know the Sheikh very well And today inshallah even though we were vacationing uh, But of course what happened in Sri Lanka is really really disturbing to everyone And I always believe that it is uh, our duty as callers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the first to uh, share with the Muslim community particularly uh, the feedback on any major event, even if it doesn't concern Muslims. So we have to educate ourselves. We have to um, enjoy what is good, forbid what is evil, benefit each other. So the uh, next few minutes, inshallah, will be uh, about that and concerning the tragedy of the bombing that happened in, uh, in Sri Lanka. And uh, obviously, I begin by making dua for the victims and their families. May Allah alleviate their pain and suffering. May Allah uh, give them strength and patience. And uh, of course, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish the perpetrators, no matter who are they. So um, uh, out of respect, I would begin by Sheikh Saeed, inshallah, Azza Jal, then I would follow him, inshallah, and we'll be back and forth between us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, my condolences to all those who have been affected by this uh, bombing. Uh, and I, I feel your pain. I feel your pain and I understand what you're going through. Not only you, but you and your family and your loved ones. It is indeed very, very painful to lose someone that you care about, to lose someone that you love, to, do, to lose someone that you know. And I guarantee you and I assure you, Islam and Muslims are free from this. And any Muslim who have any sense of understanding of Islam, any sense of uh, believing in Allah, would know that the purpose of a Muslim is to benefit, not to harm. We inherited from the teachings of Islam that Muslims are like a rain. They always benefit with land. It do not cause a flood, it did not cause harm, it does not cause any harm to living beings, animals, trees, and let alone humans. As a matter of fact, you will understand if you learn Islam, that even at the time of war, at the time where you have enemies who are waging war against you and you're fighting, and we understand that what war means, even at that time, we were instructed by our, by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not to touch places of worship, not to touch those who are worshipping in their location of worship, whether it's a synagogue or a church or a temple or whatever place, even somebody who worshipping uh, uh, an idol. We are not allowed to touch at the time of war, to touch places of worship. Anyone that is in a, in, in a in type of worship, that is part of his deen, we are not allowed to touch them. So when somebody says or somebody claims if this is the case, if somebody claims that he is Muslim and he's doing in the name of Islam and they are hurting people in the places of worship, then I guarantee you one of the two things. Either this person is extremely, extremely ignorant about Islam and he has no clue what Islam is. He has no understanding the basic of Islam, the basic courtesy of Islam. That there's someone who is going to worship in his place of worship and we go after them. That is not a teaching of Islam. Because no, you also as a Muslim, that person who's claiming that he's, he's allowing this or he's letting this happen, then he's allowing others to come after the places of worship for Muslims. So that's one. So anyone who's doing this, I guarantee he has no basics of understanding of Islam. He, even though he may have a kufi, he may have a beer, uh, he may have Islamic alpha, but that does not mean anything. Or this was done by other than uh, Muslims and something else 
that is not from the deen of Islam or somebody wants to blame Islam. Both cases is it indeed a despicable and acceptable act. And as a Muslim, we should condemn it, we should fight it, we should speak against it. And as we were grateful, grateful to, to the Prime Minister of New Zealand and the stand that she took where 50 Muslims were killed and the whole world were hurting. We also want to send our condolences and sadness towards the, the innocent people who have been killed. Even though we may not share the same faith, but we share the same understanding, which is the freedom of religion, freedom of practice, freedom of humanity, freedom of right uh, to live as a human, a right, a sufficient right to live as a human being. And this is a basic necessity of our uh, life. Also, we need to understand, we understand as a Muslims, the coexisting, as uh, definitely and myself, Sheikh Muhammad will speak about, coexisting between religions, uh, between societies, between cultures is indeed part of our faith. As you can tell, I'm from, you know, different color skin, different background, and you can tell Sheikh Muhammad, Allah, is from different background, different culture, culture, but we all come together because this is what Islam is teaching us. We have to tolerate to one towards one another. We have to respect towards one another. We have to love towards one another. And we have to understand we can't all be Christian. We can't all be Buddhists. We can't all be Muslims, but we got to learn how to tolerate. Otherwise, this, pl this planet of earth would be hell for all of us. And I'll let Sheikh Muhammad speak to you as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you all. Ameen. Jazakallah khairan, ya Sheikh Saeed. Barakallah feek. Will Saeed. So brothers and sisters, there are two things. The first is, it is my duty, Sheikh Saeed's duty, Mufti Ming's duty. All of those who happen to be in charge of educating the Muslim community who speak the language, it is our duty. Not just to send a condemnation message, uh, to the victims and their families, or to be politically correct? No, of course not. Uh, it, it is way beyond that, deeper than that. To feel sorry about it, and to feel that we should have done a greater job, and a better job, educating the Muslim community beforehand. Because whatever happens as a result of jahl or ignorance is definitely devastating. Not devastating only to the person or the person's who are the perpetrators or who have done it, even if their intention is good, there is no good intention behind that. But rather it is devastating to an, to an entire community as well. Um, as you know that Sri Lanka have suffered for a while, for years of the terrorist attacks and the fighting between the different parties. Muslims were not a part of it, alhamdulillah, but everybody was suffering. And uh, in the past few years, they have been experiencing peace and living in tolerance with each other and so on. Uh, and what happened uh, of killing people in their places of worship is entirely un-Islamic and is entirely condemned by Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'll quote two references quickly. One from the Quran, even when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed uh, jihad physically on the battlefield against the enemies of the deen. He said, وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ So he allowed us to fight back and to block the attacks of the enemies of the deen, to protect your religion, to protect your Muslim community to protect your soil, etc. But he put a condition. And this condition, even if it is on the battlefield, he said, Wala ta'atadu. I think they like the Quran. <laughs> MashaAllah. Wala ta'atadu and do not transgress. Transgress not. Which means what? What is transgression in this case? The Prophet وسلم, explained. Prior to every battle, he would uh, summon the leaders of the Muslim army, the commander of chiefs, and he would say, Ozu Bismillah, go ahead, do observe jihad in the name of Allah. Yet, la ta'atadu, la taqtulu shaykhan kabiran, wala tuflan sagiran, wala mra'atan. Don't you ever touch or hurt an old man, nor a young child, uh, nor a woman, nor a woman, subhanallah. 
And he said you would find people in their sawami'ah, their places of worship, whether it's a synagogue, whether it's a temple, uh, as Sheikh Said just mentioned, even if they are worshiping idols, this is none of your business. Lakum dinukum waliyadeen. And we perfectly understand that there is no way that you can impose a religion on no one. You only do as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idati al hasana wajadilhum billatihi ahsan. Those are the three means of giving da'wah. There is no way that you can force anyone to adopt any faith or belief. This is absolutely refused and rejected. Then he said, Wala ta'tadu. And he said, when you find people in their places of worship, don't touch them. Do not go near them. Leave them alone. They're not fighting you. Even though, even if they belong to your enemies, but they are not fighting. They are busy with their worship. So what is the Islamic stand concerning attacking places of worship? General consensus, 100%, 100%. Is haram and it's a major sin and it is outlaw killing whatsoever. And subhanallah, uh, in Surah Al Ma'idah, Allah the Almighty said, Min adi li thalika katabana ala bani Israela annahu man katala nafsan bi ghayri nafsin au fasadin fil ardi faka annama. فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا So Allah the Almighty ordained even in the Torah to Bani Israel, yani way before the Quran was revealed, whoever kills a single person, takes out the soul of a single person, بغير حق without justification, أو فساد في الأرض or just to spread corruption and mischief on earth. This is as heinous as killing all mankind together. And on the other hand, saving and sparing the life of one single person is equivalent to saving the lives of all human beings. So you get to choose. This is the Islamic teaching in this regard, brothers and sisters. Of course, we're hoping that Muslims have nothing to do with that. I was, you know, I, I contacted our brothers in Sri Lanka soon as this happened uh, to check on them because the Muslim community in Sri Lanka, I would say the most peaceful community on earth. They're quiet, they're peaceful, they're very loving, they're very caring, subhanAllah. Wallahi, you can't, but you love them. You truly love them. And mashallah, they have good relations with their neighbors, with their co-citizens. So yesterday when it was announced that this, uh, you know, barbaric attacks was as a result of or in, in retaliation to what happened in New Zealand, that is absolutely rejected and it cannot be tolerated. So wrong can never be corrected by wrongdoing. Wrong can only be corrected by what is right by what is by giving da'wah by teaching people what is right and what is wrong and i hate it when anything happens then they ascribe it to islam so they say the islamic whatever there is no islamic whatever would tolerate or approve or even you know agree with that you know in the hadith and why am i saying this why am I saying this? What kind of game do Sheikh Saeed and I and all the shiukh that whom you know gain out of that? I'll tell you what we gain out of that. In the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whenever the khati'ah, whenever a sin is committed somewhere on earth, I'm here in Nairobi, Kenya, and somebody is in Sri Lanka. There is a huge distance between us. So something wrong happened there. كَانَ مَنْ غَابَ عَنْهَا فَرَضِيَهَا كَمَنْ حَضَرَهَا Even though you're not there, but you approve it, or you like it, you do istihsan. You feel, I'm glad they did that. You're blameworthy, like the perpetrators exactly. Can you believe that? Yep. وَكَانَ مَنْ حَضَرَهَا فَأَنْكَرَهَا كَمَنْ غَابَ عَنْهَا and those who live in the society or those who happen to be there, but they disapprove it, 
They hate it. They don't like it. And they condemn it. Even though they witnessed it, but they are not blameworthy. Why? Because their hearts go against it. So that is the purpose of this uh, live broadcast right now, brothers and sisters. As I said, two things. To declare our stance as Muslims and as dua in this regard. And we say that, Wallahi, neither Islam nor any religion would approve or tolerate anything like that. And there is a punishment for that in Islam. And the punishment in Islam in this regard is the severest, if you are to know. The second is to make certain that all the audience, those who follow us, follow our pages, myself, Sheikh Saeed, or whoever, would understand that Islam is entirely against that. Islam is a message of educating people how to co-live with others, even if they differ with you, even if they have different, and also in case of being oppressed in case of being attacked like what happened in New Zealand. That is not the way to retaliate. That is not the way to take revenge. As a matter of fact, the perpetrator, the shooter in New Zealand and his allies, if they were to know in advance the outcome, the positive outcome of that shooting, uh, they wouldn't have done it. MashaAllah. We have seen great, great results. I would let Sheikh Saeed shed some light, inshallah, on that because we only have a few minutes with you before we go. The, the, the positive outcome after the mass shooting in New Zealand, alhamdulillah. Before I, I will definitely comment on that, but before I say that, <clears throat> um, in, in Islam, I know there's a lot of people claiming that they're doing things under the name of an Islam, or they're claiming that this is what Islam is requiring of them, which is an absolutely lie. I want to tell you, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, and my dear uh, brothers and sisters in humanity, Islam is not about claim. If somebody says, this is what Islam says, and this is what I'm doing, and they don't have the, the proof to back it up, it's, 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 it's not a part of Islam. We have some certain people who are saying God, Islam says God is black and only black people will go to heaven. Is mm -hmm. that what Islam is saying? No. There are certain group of people who are saying in the name of Islam, we are Islamic state and we're doing this in the name of Islam. Is Islam approving that? The answer is no. So I want you to rest assured that whatever, if this is actually, if this is, and I say if this was done by Muslims, they either was misguided Muslims, mis, uh, mis educated Muslims, but definitely has nothing to do with Islam. For those who claim this is retaliation of what happened to uh, New Zealand, first of all, the New Zealand government, the prime minister, really took a very, very powerful stand. We were all proud of it. We have never seen any Western leaders taking such stand. Um, that she did so we can we we commend her for that and we say thank you very much may god bless you for that secondly as we muslims we have to understand that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the quran Asa an shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum. you may dislike certain things that is indeed good for you yes we lost 50 our dear brothers and sisters in islam we lost them in the most holiest place on the planet of earth which is the masajid in the masjid we know for fact as muslims we we believe that if a person dies in a place such as a place like that they died in a masjid that's a good ending that means they're going to heaven especially when you have people who are in act uh in, in the middle of engage in prayer and you shoot them that is definitely a uh, one-way ticket to paradise. Now, what was the outcome? See, the guy who did this, he was anticipating, he was expecting that, you know, his fellow friends and fellow colleagues and those who believe in the same methodology will follow up with and will support him. But look, from the kindness of the people of New Zealand, we see so many of them coming to the fold of Islam. We see so many of them coming uh, in, with solidarity with the Muslims, coming to the mosque, praying with them, you know, uh, you, you know, uh, supporting them emotionally and physically, holding gatherings of thousands of people. Now, as Sheikh Muhammad Hafizahullah said, if the man who did this, if had he calculated 
right, he would have never done it because the result was up to what I know now, over 500 people accepted some. I have a friend of mine by the name John Fontaine who went there, who said they were people were accepting Islam left and right. People were understanding Islam, and when you explain Islam to them and they read about Islam, they come to the conclusion, this Islam is definitely not what the media were saying, and this is not definitely what so-called Islamic State was saying. This is a peaceful religion. This is a religion that is calling you that you are not a true Muslim. You're not a Muslim if you sleep while your neighbor is hungry. You're not a Muslim if you, if you bother your neighbor. If you just bother your neighbor. To the point our prophet said, Jibri came to consult me concerning my, my neighbor to the point that I thought my neighbor would inherit me, not my own family, my neighbor. Jibri put it in a way that the neighbor is so important, so essential in, this, in, a, in the existence of the community that he came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Gabriel, which is the angel of uh, the revelation, he keep coming to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, telling him, be good, to you, be good to your neighbor, be kind to your neighbor, be this for your neighbor, to the point that the Muhammad said, I thought that Jibreel said, after you die, ya Muhammad, your neighbor will inherit you. So now that is what Islam is teaching us. Now in Sri Lanka, I've never been there. But I've heard from Sheikh Muhammad and others that they're very, very nice community, uh, very nice people, very peaceful people. And they just came out of um, a, 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 a turmoil. They came out of time where there's a lot of killing, a lot of gangs, a lot of, you know, rapes. And they not wish, they don't wish to go back. And as Sheikh Muhammad said, Muslim and non-Muslim suffered alike. And remember, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, at the time of peace, Islam and all other religions prosper. At the time of conflict and fights, no one wins. And remember Rasulullah he was fighting, struggling, not physical, but he was emotionally, verbally abused in Mecca and the people were fighting him. And then when, even when he made hijrah to Medina وسلم, the Quraysh, they came after him. But it was only after Sulh Hudaybiyah, after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, when they both decided, why don't we stop the war for 10 years at least? Let us have that, let us stop that, have that break, and let us quit fighting one another. And that was Islam, that's when Islam jumped. Over 7,000 people accepted Islam in a short period of time. That was the time that every, all the Arab came to Islam. Why? Because at the time of peace and prosperity, everybody wins. So my nasiha to you is like, um, in Sri Lanka, I'm hoping and I'm inshallah anticipating that a lot of people will come to Islam, a lot of people will understand. And I want to say to my brothers and sisters in humanity, whether they're Christians or Buddhists or Hindus in Sri Lanka, the people who did this, they're criminals. And please do not judge the innocent Muslims who are condemning this in your own country. Don't take it on them because they are supporting you. Their hearts go went to, to, to you. Their hearts really went to you and they were sad and suffering uh, for what happened to you. Not because well, what, what that man did to the innocent people only, but what the outcome of that. So I'm saying do not judge those innocent Muslims based on what these unintelligent and educated, uh, not God-fearing people did if the, the people who did this are Muslims. And I hope and I pray to God and I pray to Allah, those who did it are not Muslims because I don't know how they will justify that on the day of Qiyamah, on the day of judgment. And Allah knows best and I'll give the camera back to Sheikh Muhammad. Zakallah khair and Sheikh Saeed and just wanna pick it up from you. And you're right, they are not Muslims. Even if they happen to carry Muslim names. Um, I, I wanna jump into conclusion brothers and sisters and I wanna say that in one incident, uh, some of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were on an expedition, they were traveling, and uh, one of them had a head injury. He was injured during the battle. And then at night, he also experienced what is known as what dream, which requires for us as Muslims to perform ghusl in order to be capable to pray. So in the morning, it was extremely cold, and um, he asked the companions, his companions, I have to perform ghusl in order to be able to pray. And as you know that I have a head injury. Is there a, another way to do it? Is there any way out? They said, no. He said, what about tayammum? 
They said, no, the Quran says, فَلَمْ تَجِدُوا مَا أَنْفَتَيَمَّمُوا If you can find water, then you can observe tayammum. But we have water, so you cannot just uh, uh, do tayammum. So the, he didn't find any solution but to shower and to do also the cold water. And as a result of that, he got an infection and he died. So when he, when, when, the, the, when the caravan returned to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was told, you know, I want you to imagine that uh, those companions of his perceived his act as heroic, and as he died as a shaheed, and they praised that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at it entirely from different uh, perspective. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, قَتَلُوهُ قَتَلَهُمُ اللَّهِ they have killed him. May Allah kill them. He was really angry with them. He was so infuriated and he held them responsible for the death of this companion. Why? Because they misled him. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, سَأَلُوا إِذْ لَمْ يَعْلَمُوا Why didn't they ask if they have no knowledge? Why do you give fatwa and you answer if you have no clue? إِنَّمَا دَوَاءُ الْعِيِّ السُؤَالِ Yani, the remedy for an ignorant person is to ask. Indeed, I have received some questions and some inquiries from a lot of people around the world asking me, what do you think of the Islamic State? Can we join them in our countries or abroad? Will you come to the right person? Whether it's Sheikh Saeed, Mufti Mink, uh, Dr. Hatim, Sheikh Salah, myself, or ever, because we did some studies. We spent almost most of our lives studying the deen, studying the different madhahib. So we'll give you an answer. You know, this is our job. But when you ask somebody who is literally unknown, simply because you saw him on a high definition video, and this is also something that we have to pause with it a little bit. As you know that a couple of years ago, the Congress was investigating, the American Congress was investigating how the Pentagon spent half billion U.S. dollar on Hollywood production of movies and video clips to propagate the Islamic State. Did you hear about that, Sheikh Saeed? Oh, yeah. No, you heard about absolutely. that? Absolutely. You know, a production company in the U.K. was producing movies and clips to encourage people, to encourage Muslim youth to praise and join the Islamic State. I understand that if I make a remark against homosexuality or anything, right away my page will be shut down, correct? If you make a remark or anything that is disapproved by the international community, you would not even exist online. You would not have a website, you would not have a Facebook page or social media. It goes against <clears throat> the society. What I'm wondering about is how come that those guys have active websites, have admins, moderators, uh, speakers, and they film that in Western countries, and all their websites are still active. Why? Who's capable of using, you know, cameras worth hundreds of thousands of dollars? I'm in the media business, and I know which camera is used to film this clip and using cranes and using trails so that when Muslim youth watch that they feel, oh, this is the Izza of the Deen and this is how we're going to recover our Khilafah and this is how we're going to be victorious. No, brothers and sisters, wallahi not. The leaders of those people are entirely unknown in the field of da'wah, in the field of knowledge, in the field of even seeking knowledge. All those names are absolutely unknown to us. Like, if I'm invited somewhere to any country, by any organization, I don't just say, yeah, I'm coming. Just book me a business, uh, business uh, class ticket. What I say, I call my colleagues. Sheikh Saeed, have you been to this country before? Yes, there is an organization called so-and-so. Do you know them? Are they trustworthy? Can I go, can I visit? And I'm going to teach not to carry a gun. So we investigate, we find out, we don't just go, we don't just say whatever. So how could a person, how could a successful student in medical school or in law school or a girl studying nursing or studying art, they watch a couple of videos, then they become captivated with emotions 
and they are being instructed online to carry a tag somewhere here or there, or even to leave the comfort zone, their countries, where they can give da'wah, where they can uh, you know, prove that they are true Muslims, and they travel abroad in order to be killed. Yep, that's a trap. Wallahi, wallahi. I swear to Allah, it's a trap. And it's a trap that's set up by the intelligence of many countries. I wonder, why would the Pentagon spend half billion dollars, almost 500 million US dollars, to produce movies and video clips to propagate what is called Islamic State? If you want to know the word Islamic, go back to the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ. Learn what the Quran says in this regard. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا دُخُلُوا فِي السِّلْمِ كَافَةِ Enter into Islam wholeheartedly and entirely. So what do you know about it? Yes, they are brainwashed on me. But it is our duty to correct that and to <coughs> explain that to them. Alhamdulillah, we successfully managed to prevent many things like that when people ask us on an individual basis. And Allah knows best and He's our witness. We keep it very, very confidential. Even the question is deleted, so no one knows who is this person. But alhamdulillah wa shukla, they're being corrected. So now it is your role, those who are um, watching us um, right now, to spread this word, to share that video, and to tell your children, the youth, and your community that Islam has nothing to do with that. And here is the right teaching of Islam in this regard. So once again, uh, please accept our condolences, all the Muslim condolences to the victims' families and those who have been hurt in Sri Lanka, as we did say in New Zealand, exactly, exactly. May Allah guide us to what is best. May Allah alleviate their pain and suffering. <clears throat> And uh, Bindukt, yes, this is what we've been doing right now since the beginning. I began uh, this live broadcast with praying for you and your country. And Sheikh Saeed, my colleague here, uh, as I said, even though we are on a vacation, but we can't wait. We were praying just to have good internet connection because we are literally in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but we made certain that we pray for you, we pray for the victims and their families, and we pray for the Muslim community uh, to be safe and sound as well, particularly in Sri Lanka after those uh, attacks. Sheikh Saeed, you want to conclude by saying anything? No, I just I want to appreciate what the Sri Lankan government um, is doing for, for their country and for their people, for their community, and understanding that Muslims, also Sri Lankan Muslims, are uh, Sri Lankan citizens, and they should enjoy the rights and the protection of, of, of any city, like any other Sri Lankan. Um, the government, it is due duties and the responsibility of the government to make sure those who practice uh, uh, their religions, whether the Christians, or the Hindus, or the Buddhists, or anybody, or Muslims, they also should, um, they all should enjoy the security, the, the freedom of religion, and so on. So we just uh, plea with the, with the Sri Lankan government to Make sure that all communities are safe. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. And thank you very much. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh Saeed. And you brothers and sisters, may Allah bless you all. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all our sins and to guide us to what is best. O oh Allah, guide our youth and keep us all safe and sound and spread peace all over uh, the world. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أنسوا أنظر الله إن شاء الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته